Hello, children. So today we are going to study the further changes which are taking place after fertilization. That is the post-fertilization changes. Again, in yesterday's class, we studied the double fertilization, and we came to know that double fertilization is a special event which is found only in the angiosperm, in which the two male gametes, which are formed in the pollen grain, are fused with the two cells of the female, that is the ovule, one of which one of the male gamete fuses with the egg cell, whereas the other male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei. And the polar nuclei with after fusion form a triple fusion, which leads to the formation of endosperm, whereas the the egg cell after fertilization forms zygote, and zygote will further develop into embryo. Now we are going to study what are the further changes taking place after the fertilization. We also know that in the life of sexual reproducing organisms complete in three phases, that is the pre-reproductive, reproductive, and uh, post-reproductive. And uh, the life cycle, the, the reproductive phase itself is divisible into three, that is the pre-fertilization, -re -pre fertilization, and post-fertilization. And the pre-fertilization we studied, that is the gametogenesis and gamete transfer are the two main events which are taking place. And during fertilization, that is the main event is, that is the fusion of the male and female cells. Okay, so here it is double fertilization, which you already done. And now we are going to study how, how further development that is from the uh, zygote to a new one taking place that is known as embryogenesis. So let us continue with embryogenesis. Okay, or rather post fertilization changes, not embryogenesis exactly, but we will study post fertilization events. Okay, so in the post fertilization, there are two main events which are taking place. That is, as we have already studied, that a triploid cell, that is endosperm, is formed. So, for the development of endosperm takes place, and at the same time, the development of zygote into a new one also takes place. But in all the angiosperm, the endosperm development is taking place prior to the development of embryo. So, let us let us read from here what is written. That is. Following double fertilization, event of the endosperm and embryo development, maturation of ovule into seed and ovaries into fruit are the collectively termed as post-fertilization event. So, what are what are events are there? That is the event of endos the events of endosperm and embryo, embryo development. Here again, that is maturation of ovule and uh, maturation of ovule into seed and ovary into fruit. So, these are the things. Which are taking place. So they are collectively known as post fertilization event. So first, we will study about endosperm. Endosperm development precedes embryo development. Endosperm, as we know, that is it is the triploid cell which is formed by the fusion of male gamete with the polar nuclei. And it contains three haploid nuclei, that is, it has got extra content of the nuclear material. So now it's written that endosperm development precedes embryo development. Why? The reason is that is the embryo when it develops. For the development of embryo, energy is required, more uh, food and raw materials are required, so that food, raw material, and energy will come from the cells of uh, endosperm. Okay? So the primary endosperm cell divides repeatedly to form a triploid, triploid endosperm tissue. The cells of this tissue filled with reserve food material and are used in the nutrition for developing embryo. So that is a very important thing. That is the endosperm actually provide nourishment to the growing embryo. In most common type of endosperm development, there are three different ways the endosperm development takes place. First is the free, free nuclear. Free nuclear is the one in which the endosperm cell, which is formed after fertilization, that will continue to divide. What the nucleus, not the cell. The nucleus start dividing. So one nuclei will form two, two will form four, four will form eight, eight will form sixteen, and then this num this multiplication will go on going without formation of cell wall. So it is only a collection of large number of nuclei. There is no cell wall. There is no cytoplasm division. There is no cell. This type of uh, division is called free free nuclear division and it is found in the coconut. The most common example is of coconut. The coconut, tender coconut milk which you or tender coconut water which you drink is nothing but it is the free nuclei. Okay. Now, the second type of event is there in which the endosperm first divides about four to say, uh, six times uh, free nuclear way and then the cytoplasm division start or begin. So, 
uh, up to eight or sixteen or thirty-two cells will form, and then the cytoplasmic division will continue. And the third one is there in which the division right from the first division, the cell cytoplasmic division is also taking place. Cellular cellularization is also taking place. Okay. Now here the coconut's example is very famously quoted because the coconut has got large number of nuclei in the form of water, which we see. Tender coconut has got water, and that water is nothing but it is. Uh, free nuclear, and if, if you remember that in most of the cases when the person patient uh, someone is sick and uh, is in the phase of recovery, doctor generally advised to give him coconut water. Why? Because coconut water is a tender um, uh, water which contains large number of cells, and the cell has got extra cellular material, and that's why it is good good source of uh, what you call energy and. It does not even have cell wall form, so it's easy to digest and easy to uh, readily use for energy purpose and other recovery phase. Okay, so that is the most important. And after some time, when the nuclear cellularization takes place, that is the cytoplasmic division takes place, where then the cell wall start forming, that those cells itself start forming a layer in the coconut. That is uh, commonly when when we have the coconut drink, um, water after that. That uh, whoever is the vendor, he gives uh, scraped it with the uh, what they call spoon. That is called in in general in Hindi we say it is malai. So coconut ki jab malai hai, that is nothing but it is the those cells which are started depositing after uh, cellularization. And when we buy a coconut, that uh, the dry coconut, the thick layer of the white substance which we see there, that is all endosperm cell. Okay. Come to next, endosperm may be either completely consumed by the developing embryo, as in case of pea, groundnut, and beans. These three examples you remember, London by heart. These are those examples in which the endosperm is completely consumed by the growing embryo itself before the seed maturation, or it may remain persistent in the mature seed, as in case of castor and coconut. The castor and coconut are two common examples in which the the endosperm even remain uh, after the seed formation. So they are there, and uh, um, when we eat, we are even getting a certain amount of that uh, endosperm. Okay, so then further activities are given for you. That is, you have to cut open cut open some of the. Uh, that is seed, and you have to study them whether they have got endosperm or not. Okay, now let's talk about the development of embryo. That is embryogenesis. Okay, embryo development at the micropylar end. So why it is towards the micropylar end? Because we have studied that micropyle is the part through which the pollen tube enters, and there are the two synergies are there, which are actually leading them to the egg cell. So egg cell, the uh, the egg apparatus, which is commonly known as And the, the synergies they all are lying towards the micropyle. So the embryo development is actually taking place at the micropylar end. Okay. Then again, the same thing is repeated here. Most zygote divide only after certain amount of endosperm is formed. Why? The reason is very clear. Because for the growing embryo, the the nutrition is required, and that nutrition is actually provided by this uh, this endosperm cell. This is an adaptation to provide assured nutrition for the developing embryo. Though the seed seed differ greatly, there are some uh, there are some seed which are large in size, some are small in size, some are monocot, some are dicot, some are uh, with the thick seed coat and some with the not so thick. There are variety of variations which we see in the seed. But when we talk about the embryogeny or embryogenesis, the process are more or less same. So the process are given here. That is what are the steps so which are given here. See, this is the this is the ovicet embryo. Uh, sorry, ovicet, and in the ovicet we find that two synergies were there, and then then this is the egg which is actually after fertilization form zygote, and this is this is uh, the endosperm which is formed after fertilization from the uh, diploid or two haploid um, pollen nuclei. These are the end. Um, What they call antipodal cells, and antipodal cells are no use. They does not have any role to play, so they will degenerate. So it is written here, degenerating antipodal cells. Okay, so 
the endosperm we already spoken about what are their role and how they uh, they can take place so we are not studying about this we are studying that how zygote develop into an embryo so this is the pro uh, cell which is there that is the zygote it divides into two one large and one small cell the large one forms it ends to uh, goes towards one end the small one continuously divide number of time and it forms a suspension okay so this is the suspension here and at the far end a few of the cells will continuously divide mitotic division we have already studied that all the diploid organism the zygote always divide by mitotic division because the zygote is already diploid and this has to result the formation of an adult diploid individual so at the far end these cells will continuously divide number of times so they will form two cell two to four four to eight eight to sixteen and they will form a globular structure so this particular stage of the embryo development is called globular embryo now the globular part of this embryo will start developing a slit some of the cells start moving inside and this is how they form a heart shaped uh, structure here the suspension of these cells will finally reduce very highly reduced okay so that's not so that uh, important what we have to pay attention is here so this will be the part where the embryo will be there right? this two will develop into cotyledon so later for the development of this will form two cotyledons and if it is monocot they will be only one cotyledon so that is the only difference that is in dicot there will be two cotyledon and monocot one cotyledon again if this part you study you will find that is, there is a radical region and there is a plumule region the hypocotyl part will be develop into radical and apicotyl part will develop into plumule so the the development is same in in case of monocot or in case of dicot so that is what we have studied here now in a typical typical and uh, dicotyledonous embryo consists of an embryonal axis embryonal axis is this particular part which later this particular part this is called embryonal axis so which can be seen here this is the embryonal axis where the plumule and the radical root cap and hypocotyl are there and these will be changing into cotyledon those two heart shaped structure whereas in 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 case of grass family plant there is only one cotyledon and that is called the uh, scutellum in all the monocot there is only one cotyledon okay so This embryonal axis and two cotyledons. The portion of the embryonal axis above the level of cotyledon, above the level of cotyledon, they it will form apicotyle, and apicotyle will result the formation of plumule, or later on in the stem after germination of the plant. And the cylindrical portion below the level of cotyledon that will be called as hypocotyle. Hypocotyle will develop into a root after germination. okay and the root will be covered by a root cap root cap is very important because you know that as the root penetrate in the soil it is it is the the root cap which is which is uh, facing maximum resistance of friction by the soil particles so those cells may die damage and these cells has to be continuously replaced so root cap just below the root cap there is a part or there is a portion which, which which is containing the meristematic cells which are continually dividing and adding meristematic cells okay let us talk uh, further ahead the embryo of the monocotyledon possesses only one cotyledon and in grass family this single cotyledon is which is highly reduced and this is called scutellum okay at its lower end the embryonal axis has radical and the root cap which are enclosed by the undifferentiated sheath that is called cotyledon okay and the similar type of sheath is also found in the uh, apicotyl region and that is called coleoptyl so apicotyl will develop into shoot and uh, hypocotyl will develop into root okay so that for the the development of embryo is now we shall study about seeds seeds are uh, both gymnosperm and angiosperm produce seed and that is uh, they are called spermatophyta Okay, the spermatophyta, or commonly in in scientific scientific language, it is called uh, phenogen. So, the seed producing plant in angiosperm, the seed is the final product of the sexual reproduction. Ultimately, all whatever events are there, that is the formation of flower and third and stigma and pollen grain and ovule, and then fertilization, double fertilization, and then the sperm development and embryo development. ultimately this all will result in the formation of a seed so seed is nothing but it is a fertilized ovule 
the seed are formed inside the fruit now why the fruits are there why is fruit formed the fruit is just a, a, a sort of attraction there is a sort of uh, reward for those organisms which eat fruit and they disperse their seed to the distant places from the parent plant seeds are formed inside the fruit and seed typically consists of seed core cotyledons embryonal axis three things are there the embryonal axis will have radical and tubule and the cotyledons with stored food and the seed cord seed cord are formed by the two integuments which we have studied after the outside the uh, ovule there are two integuments are there and just between the integument there is a small pore is left where through which the pollen tube entered that is called uh, micropyle okay so seed is formed inside the fruit and having typically consist of seed cord tip cotyledon and embryonal axis the cotyledons of the embryo are simple structure gradually uh, generally thick swollen and due to the storage of food reserve reserve food in it okay so cotyledon whether it is one or two uh, they will be containing some stored food and it is because of that we are consuming most of the pulses where the cotyledons two cotyledons which are thick which are rich in nutrient may be all the pulses dalle jitne bhi hain peanut is there all the uh, oil bearing seeds jo hai oil seeds ko all sab jo hai the badam and kaju and all whatever what part we are eating is nothing but they are cotyledon now the cotyledon the mature seed may have albumin or may not have albumin albumin is that part which is actually formed by the endosperm so if during the phase of development of the embryo if the entire entire uh, endosperm is consumed then the seed will be non albuminous as example we already studied they are peas beans and the ground nut whereas if the endosperm remain persisting then they are called albuminous albuminous seed we have studied as a castor and coconut okay so these are there and the further examples are given that is uh, wheat maize barley castor and sunflower occasionally in some of the seed like in black pepper that a very important line uh, as in the black pepper the nucellus even is found on after maturity and such such uh, seeds are called peri that structure is or nucellus is called perisperm okay where the sperm is sperm is used for the seed and peri is the surrounding that is the surrounding part of the seed so as we already studied that nucleus nucellus is found outside the uh, ovicide now integument of the ovule harden and they form seed coat okay and uh, the seed coat may be of different thickness in the different species of the plant and some of it may be very thick as in case of uh, in in case of uh, uh, what you call <coughs> mango or it may be thin bilkul will very thin as in case of peanuts or as in case of uh, uh, peas and all okay so they may be of different now this facilitate the entry of oxygen now sorry there is a there is a minute pore left between the endosperm and that is uh, uh, what is called uh, integument and that is known as that is known as uh, micropyle and micropyle is the, that small opening through which the pollen tube enter that still remain there even after formation of seed and it will be serving as a as a gate or as a opening through which the oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged uh, during the respiration and during germination the water enter through this okay we know that during the during the uh, dormancy all metabolic activities are greatly reduced and that is because made possible because all the enzymes and all the hormones whatever are required for the activities they all are dehydrated so once the water enter through the micropyle they again become active and then the process of germination again begins okay so the water content is reduced in the seed when which is reaching up to 10 to 15% of the moisture by mass so suppose a seed is of 10 g so 10 g ka 10 that is only 1 g water will be there okay so this is how it will be the general metabolic activity of the embryo slows down greatly okay and the embryo may enter in a state of dormancy dormancy is that state in which the seed will uh, uh, seed will remain till it get all the favorable condition now what are the favorable condition of germination it require water it require oxygen it require light it require suitable temperature okay so when these conditions are made available to it it will again start germinating so 
uh, as ovule mature uh, as ovule matures into seed the ovary also develop into fruit so both that is the the development of ovule and the development of ovary both goes simultaneously because we have also studied that is when the fruit is formed the seed is within it but when when a flower is there when the fruit is not formed there is no seed so seed is formed simultaneously with the fruit formation okay however in some of the plants we have seen that the fruit is formed but the seed is not there such type of plants are such type of fruits are called parthenocarpic fruits they may be natural or they may be induced one okay so when they have to be induced we have to use those chemicals those hormones which are required for the, the fruit formation okay so the ovule will develop into seed and the ovary will develop into fruit transformation of the ovule into seed and ovary into fruit proceeds proceed simultaneously the wall of the ovary develop into wall of the fruit called pericarp so you might have seen several fruits nowadays the mangoes are available when you cut a mango you see the thick outer yellowish color layer is there that is called pericarp in between there is a fleshy layer is there that is called mesocarp and just outside the seed there is a tough layer is there that is called endocarp so this may be there now the fruits may be of two type they may be group that is they may be juicy or they may be they may be uh, scaly okay so when the scaly is there that is that means there the mesocarp is highly reduced and the endocarp mesocarp they all are confused together as in case of all the legume the matter ki phali dekhi hoga aapne if you just say it like this the outermost the thin layer is there that is pericarp then there is a fleshy juicy uh, middle layer are there that is mesocarp okay and just on the on the pea there is a uh, uh, sorry the inside is there is layer that is endocarp and the pea has got its own integument okay so that is how the three layers are there okay so depending on the mesocarp whether it is fleshy or whether it is dry accordingly the fruits value is there in case of all dry fruits there it remain dry whereas in the on the legumes it is remain dry but on the juicy fruits like mango like guava like uh, chiku what is chiku from biology name uh, what is the, the name of english name of the chiku chiku is known as sapota okay and uh, it's interesting interesting to know okay so is there any relationship between the number of ovules and the number of seed form yes directly related because as many ovules are there the seed will be either that many or it may be little less depending on the fertilization all those ovules which are fertilized they will develop into seed not it's not necessary that all the ovules will fertilize if there are a large number of ovules uh, nowadays uh, watermelons are available to you and uh, when you are eating watermelon you are finding hundreds of seeds in that all those seeds were actually part of the ovule and on fertilization they all develop into seeds okay let us talk about the most uh, in most of the plants by the time fruit development uh, from the ovary the floral parts degenerate what degenerate sepals falls petals falls stamens also falls the stigma has got that is the the, the stigma and style they will also degenerate the ovary will develop into fruit and the ovule will develop into seed and they are only two important parts which remain later on in some of the cases you will find even the sepals are there so they are persistent sepal as in most commonly in case of uh, uh, what family is that that is uh, the potato family potato family okay okay now the fruits are of two type that is when the fruits are developed truly from the ovary it is called true fruit but if the fruit is developed from any other part than the ovary then it is called false fruit so apple strawberry cashew nut are uh, those plants which are those fruits which are developed from other parts maybe receptacle maybe some other part unko sab ko false fruit kahenge remember apple is not a true fruit it is a false fruit and rest all the fruits which are developed from the ovary may be fruits or may be vegetable aap usko technical language mein aap usko uh, vegetable kehte honge may be green chili but for biology it is a fruit the guava kaddu and noki uh, and karela all are fruits theek hai so um, and this line i already explained that is those fruits which are 
form without fertilization they are called fertile okay now seed has got several advantages let us finish this also and from there next topic we will study tomorrow seed has got number of advantages first of all it is the base of agriculture bina seed ke to hum agriculture ke bare mein soch bhi nahi sakte it has got reserve food in it it has got thick seed coat which is protecting it against the environmental condition ठीक है इट हैज अ फेस ऑफ डोरमेंसी इन व्हिच इट कैन प्रोटेक्ट इटसेल्फ टिल द फेवरेबल कंडीशन कम एंड द सीड मे हैव सम टाइप ऑफ सम टाइप ऑफ अटैचमेंट सम टाइप ऑफ एडेप्टेशन व्हिच विल हेल्प देम टू डिस्पर्स ओके एंड इट हैज गॉट सम रिजर्व फूड व्हिच विल बी यूज्ड बाय द एम्ब्रियो फॉर देयर डेवलपमेंट टिल द फर्स्ट लीव्स कम सो दीस आर द फाइव एडवांटेजेस है ना द हार्ड सीड कोड जो है उसको बचा के रखेगा एंड okay so for the next we will study in the next class that is the the seed is the basis of our agriculture yahan se hum aage padhenge so i think this much of uh, you you are you are you are studying aisa mere ko lagta hai there are number of children who are taking attending class there are number of children who are not attending because the views ko batate hain ki there are many who are attending but uh, except one or two nobody is putting attendance yeah, it will be गुड इफ यू पुट अटेंडेंस एट लीज एट लीज अगर इस साल के जैसे एटमोसफेयर हो गया अगले साल भी बिकॉज ऑफ कोरोना इज गोइंग इन दैट सेम वे एंड सपोज नेक्स्ट ईयर ऑल्सो गवर्नमेंट डिसाइड टू प्रमोट द चिल्ड्रन ऑन द बेसिस फॉर देयर इंटरनल असेसमेंट एंड देयर अंडरस्टैंड तो हमारे पास खुद को रिकॉर्ड होना चाहिए ना वेदर यू रियली अटेंडेड क्लास और नॉट ठीक है वेदर यू आर रियली डूइंग और समथिंग और नॉट सो प्लीज प्लीज वेन यू when you are in the class put yourself present okay mark yourself present in the in the nobody call comment section theek hai it hardly matters we are not asking your mobile number we are not asking your address not your uh, the email address for anything so privacy aap ye kahi lose nahi hui you have to write only your name that's all okay सरकार आपको वैक्सीनेशन के लिए अलाउ करेगी बहुत बड़ा एहसान करेगी बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली यू विल ऑनली टू पे फॉर दैट सो ठीक है लेट लेट इट बी सेम गवर्नमेंट ने कभी सोचा तो सही थे यार दोस पीपल हु आर द मोस्ट कॉमनली गोइंग आउट मीटिंग एवरीवन जिनको घर पे बैठाना मुश्किल है उन लोगों का वैक्सीनेशन जो है बुड्ढे-बुड्ढियों को अच्छे से करा के बैठा दिया जाता है थैंक यू गुड डे चिल्ड्रन